What's going on guys? The Bearded Baron here bringing you another Dead by Daylight video. Now this video is intended to be a one-stop shop for the new player of Dead by Daylight. Regardless of whether you're playing Survivor or Killer, this video is going to break down the bare bone basics across the board for both sides so that way you can educate yourself whether you just got the game or whether you're considering on getting the game this guide is going to help you to get started and what you can expect in dead by daylight but without further ado let's get into the video all right so getting into this tutorial which is absolutely massive I'm going to put timestamps in for particular things that I'm going to talk about in the game. Uh, I'm going to start off with Survivor and then we're going to work towards Killer. So re depending on what you need help with or if you just want to watch all of it, it will be listed here right now for you guys. Uh, but the first thing we're going to talk about is the help and tutorials. Now this screen doesn't say that it has a whole lot to it, but there's a lot more to this than what meets the eye. The very first thing that we see here is that we have the how to place the survivor and how to play the killer. Now, these are great for two reasons. One, this is the only time that you're ever going to play against NPCs in Dead by Daylight. So this is a very sandbox game type to show you the bare bone basics of how to play the game on both sides the additional thing that you get here is that completing each one of these is going to reward reward you with thirty thousand blood points a piece so this is really great later on i'm going to explain the blood point currency and how it works but having a, a quick sixty thousand blood points to help you determine whether or not you want to play survivor or killer is actually really great starting off if you want to dive into the individual manuals as well, this will go into the killers, the survivors, and the game, kind of the backstory if you're into that, into the lore kind of thing, as well as break down the information uh, for each survivor. So we can see the different health states, uh, what each different thing means, um, and how to play along with it. Additionally, we have the archives here. Now the archives is a relatively new thing to Dead by Daylight at the timing of this video. But this is broken up into two basic parts. We have the Tome and we have the Rift up here at the top. So if we go to Tome, Tomes are basically listed as challenges to complete uh, for the particular season that we have. And how much time you have left in a particular season will be shown up here in the top left corner. But if we show up, if we start off here, we can highlight a new challenge for ourselves. This one says to be chased by the killer for a total of 60 seconds. So once that is completed during a match, we'll come back and we'll be able to reward ourselves with 15,000 additional blood points apart from what we got from the match uh, to be able to use that in our blood web. So we're trying to make our progression all the way over here to the epilogue to which then we'll be rewarded with a uh with a charm and with rift fragment now going over to the rift tab we can see here there there was two sides there is the premium and there is the free now i highly recommend that if you are starting off in dead by daylight that you just get the free side don't spend any money until you are convinced that this is a game that you really are going to enjoy for me i play this game quite a lot so i have the premium side now the advantage of playing on the premium side is that once you use your oryx cells to buy the premium side if we unlock the pass here we can see that it costs a thousand oryx cells we not only unlock more cosmetic items than what we would get on the free side but we're also we're also rewarded with oryx cells throughout the season so getting all of these oryx cells actually gives us enough oryx cells to pay for the next season as well so paying that 1000 oryx cells right out of the gate uh and then you'll you're going to be able to get to reuse that over and over and over again it's really really great uh i think that this is an amazing thing that behavior has done to reward players for continuing to play and for playing a lot so that uh really really awesome thing that they do but basically these goes up to 70 i think that the rifts 
uh the seasons last for 60 days i want to say it's 60 days but i'm not 100 percent on that uh, but then after that point then they'll they'll create a new seasons they'll have new killers new survivors uh cosmetic items that you can get by completing these challenges and you complete the challenges by doing the individual tomes and by playing the games in general the compendium here as well um is that you can explore any of the previous tomes any of the previous uh seasons that we've experienced before in the past so as you can see here we're on our third one at the time of this filming um who knows how many that there'll be out here once you decide to to get this game or watch this video but you can see that uh there are there are many different uh many different seasons that uh that are being played and uh, like i said i do really really enjoy it all right so coming back out to the main menu we're also going to click here on play as a survivor so now this is going to be the main hub for the vast majority of people because dead by daylight is an asymmetric horror game so there's going to be four survivors to every killer that play so first thing we're going to take a look at is this top right hand corner up here and the first thing we have for our currencies is oryx cells this again can be bought with real life currency and this is used for cosmetic items primarily um actually they're only used for cosmetic items i don't know what i'm talking about so you can get different cosmetic items for your particular character that they come out with some of them are really cool some of them are not but it's all based off of individual taste these oryx cells and the cosmetics that are in that you'll find in dead by daylight don't help you in the least bit they just look nice the next one that we have here is iridescent shards now iridescent shards can be used to buy new killers can be used to buy new survivors as well as perks from the shrine i'll show you guys the shrine here in a little bit as well but uh, iridescent shards are really great to have i recommend holding on to them and only using them to unlock new survivors and new killers until you have all of them then you can use them on the shrine to buy out new perks as you see fit but then again you can play this however you'd like to but i recommend holding on to them last but not least we also have blood points now blood points is your main currency in dead by daylight this is what's going to allow you to upgrade your perks upgrade your offerings uh add-ons items everything along those lines is going to fall into this category uh and blood points is what you will receive at the end of every match that you play whether it's killer or survivor next to that we have the player level so it'll show here your current xp and what you need in order to get to the next level uh, and then right next to that we also have our survival rank now this is my smurf account so i'm only rank five on my smurf account but as you can see here there are five little tokens little black circles uh, next to the progress these are what's called pipping in dead by daylight so each one as you do well in a match you will pip or maybe double pip getting two of those pips or you'll do badly and you'll lose a pip this kind of determines your overall rank although i highly believe that rank doesn't really matter in this game uh not really anymore but it's still as a way to see how far you're progressing all right so the top left over here we can see that we have survivors so the survivors that we have you can see each one of them based off of their level as well and you can also see which characters that you don't currently own they will be slightly grayed out now this lego set that you see here is a uh, an additional cosmetic thing uh that i added into the game that's a separate video entirely but this shows you what survivors that you do have or don't have so if we sit here and we click on somebody like jake park and we go to the next top down we can see that the game tells us what his three personal perks are and by hovering over them you can see what each one of those do now when you start off you have nothing absolutely nothing you have no items you have no offerings you have no add-ons the only thing that you do have is the three native perks that was talked about earlier the way that you unlock new perks is through your blood web 
So you'll start off at one. The top level is 50. And you will use your blood points to get new perks. So now if we flip back over, now we can see that we have hope that's filled in here. Now it says here that our next perk slot is opened up at five, 10 and 15 total. So if we were to go through this blood web really quickly and move this up, we can see that we not only unlock new perks, but we're also increasing our level. So getting to five, we will unlock our next perk slot. The perk slot two is now available. So now we can actually add that in here and use that for the next slot. So this works both for killer and survivor. This is the exact same type of screen. Now you'll also notice that I've also picked up some items. So now we can add an item to bring into the match. We also have attachments now for this item. So we can fill these in as well. And we have offerings. So depending on the offering, the offering is global, right? So if we brought in a bloody party streamers, that grants a 100% bonus blood points in all categories for all trial or for all players for that tr particular trial. So we can see here that we can also have, maybe we can have in something that is only personal for ourselves and doesn't really uh, affect anybody else. But as you progress forward in your blood web, uh, the entity eventually will start to fight against you uh, and it will make it harder to get them. I recommend here when you're working through your blood web that you focus on getting perks first. Whether it is, uh, you know, a new perk or it is an existing perk, focusing on those over items is going to help you out in the long run. Now, let's say that you get a survivor to level 50. You've completely maxed out that person and you think, hmm, what can I possibly do next? Coming over to your blood web, you'll notice that you have a little prestige icon now. So what you can do is you can hit this prestige icon and if you hold it, it'll come up with this screen. It'll tell you exactly what happens. When you prestige a character, you lose everything. You lose all the perks, all the items, all the add-ons, all the offerings will be gone. What you do get in place of that is you get a new cosmetic item uh, a lot of times it is the bloody clothes depending on what prestige level that you are and you get an increased chance of getting slightly it says here it slightly increases the odds of getting better items in the blood web so this is more this is rare items uh this is you know your uh your pinks and purple items uh in the blood web you have an increased chance of this so if we take a look here real quick, I have all of my perks. We have tons of offerings. I've got tons of add-ons that we can use. So coming over here, we're going to click prestige, click OK. And now you'll see here uh, that we start back over at level one. We're granted with a bloody uh, torso that we can use in our customization, uh, customization window here. So now we have a bloody, uh, a bloody torso cosmetic that we can use but when we go back over to our loadout we see here that we've restarted just like when we had with jake park and now we have to start over on that blood web all over again to get perks now the blood web is completely and utterly random it is completely random that was the word i was looking for completely and utterly random sometimes you will get really good perks starting off other times you will take you hours and thousands upon thousands, millions upon millions of blood points in order to get the exact perks that you want, especially as you start to unlock new characters. But as you move up, let's say, for instance, we have David King here. So now as you move up in your experience in Dead by Daylight, you'll notice that for each of these different teachable perks that you have, once you get to a particular level, whether that's 30, 35 and 40, or I believe 25, 30, and 35, depending on the character and depending on the perk, uh, you can unlock these perks for other survivors. So eventually what will happen is, is you can have every single perk on every single survivor um, and you can put them all onto one survivor or you can get every single perk for every single survivor just depending on how you want to play it. 
Me personally, my uh, on my main, my personal guy is my boy Jeff here. Uh, Jeff, uh, he has every single perk from every single survivor uh, on it as well. Uh, you can also come down here to the customization menu uh, and you can add in different things for your uh, particular survivors or killers. Um, so this will allow you to change uh, how your character looks and those can be bought in the store as well. So if we head over to the store, I can show you guys by because we had selected David here to play, we can switch over and we can see here uh, that we can get different cosmetic items. So like I said before, you can use Oryx cells uh, to, unlock, uh, to unlock these cosmetic items, or you can use iridescent shards. Again, I recommend holding on to your iridescent shards because if we come into, if we click onto the characters tab here, you can see I can buy Kate for 9,000 iridescent shards. Rather than paying 20,000 iridescent shards for a cosmetic skin of David, I now can unlock another character and their teachable perks uh, to be able to use on, say, David later on in the future. Another really good thing here is the Shrine of Secrets. Now the Shrine of Secrets resets every seven days. Resets every single Tuesday, US. Uh, and these will have, these will always have two survivor perks and it will have two killer perks as well. Now you can see here that some of these are, or all of these cost 2000 iridescent shards. Basically what that means is, is that you can use this currency again to buy out an individual perk. So that way you can use it as a teachable without having to unlock that particular character. A really big one that people use is like Claudette's self care or Nancy's inner strength or on the killer side, you also have the, uh, like barbecue and chili from Leatherface, um, you know, or Rancor from Spirit, for example. But this is where you would find it. Uh, it is completely random, I do believe. Um, although they keep track of them, I think there's kind of a uh, running track. So I think you can figure out when the next uh, time that a certain perk will be on there. I highly recommend that uh, you just unlock the character spend the blood points, unlock the teachables, uh, rather than wait on the shrine. Cause otherwise you could be waiting a while, depending on what it is. All right. So like I said, playing as a survivor, you can have up to four people playing together in a match, or you'll always have four people playing together in a match, but you can also invite, uh, your friends. So there are two ways that you can invite your friends. One way is clicking on the plus button that you see here in the lobby. The other way is clicking down here uh, on your friends list. Now clicking on this friends list here will show you who all is in game, who's all on online and offline as well from your friends list. And then you can also come in to your request here as well. So if you have a new friend that you want to find, you simply type in whatever that the person's name is, you find them and you send them an invite. Uh, and then you will see that pop up on your pending invites list. Now, the other thing as well is there is cross play in dead by daylight. So if you're on PC, you can play with PlayStation. You can play with Xbox. You can play with Nintendo switch. It's all open. So if you are on PC, like I am, and you want to play with a console pleb, I mean, player, uh, then you want to find this little four digit code as well. So you'd give them the, your name and this little code here, and that will help them to be able to find you or vice versa. Now, another thing that you can do from the main menu as well is you can go into what's called a custom game. Now a custom game is a valuable tool for finding out how certain perks work if you want to just play with your friends and you just want a very relaxing type of match or you want everybody to have everything possible but this allows you to play killer and survivor with your buddies this is not playing out with randoms out in the internet sphere instead you would just invite in your four friends so you can switch between killer survivor and then you can also have two spectators as well so there can be a maximum of seven people inside this match and you'll see here that we can't start without we can't start without a killer so you have to have a killer but the great thing is is that if we come over here to our inventory as well or to our loadout tab 
we'll see here we have access to every single perk from every single survivor we now have that available to us to be able to use so like i said this is very great when a new killer or a new survivor drops in dead by daylight you can go into a custom match throw on the new perks and you can test them out to their fullest potential before deciding whether or not that you want to get the new survivor or get the new killer uh, and be able to use them additionally you can also use the uh you know any uh items or add-ons that you would have you're going to be able to use those as well so like if we throw on a flashlight here we're going to be able to unlock any kind of attachment that we want with our flashlights uh, and then we're also going to use any type of of offering that is available as well so again this is a test bed that's going to allow you to really kind of hone in how you want to play it maybe you want to try killer for the first time or try survivor for the first time custom games is a great way to do that without potentially making a fool out of yourself when you don't know what you're doing the other thing as well is that you can go into the match management on here and you can actually adjust this accordingly you can choose to play any map uh, as it would have it or you can pick a particular map that you want to play instead and you can apply those changes you can also do this for we can have all perks or no perks we can have any items or no items uh, and the same for offerings and we can allow or not allow for dc killers after that you just simply click on apply the changes and you'll see here that now we have access to nothing so again this is a fun little way to play with your friends to have a great time and to try out new things as well the next thing that we're going to talk about here on the main menu is daily rituals now clicking on daily rituals we're going to see a mixture of both killer and survivor uh rituals as well so we have you know, each one of these daily rituals is completely random uh as well as what kind of point value that you're going to get from them uh and you do have the option of once a day of clicking on the trash can button to remove that so let's say that you're a survivor main you don't care about killer uh killer dailies you can simply just uh you know hit the trash can button and and boom you're done with that particular one and it'll give you a new random one uh once every 24 hours or you can complete them and you can get the blood points that are going to come with them as well another little caveat that i'll add in here as well is that you can go into the news section whenever there is a new uh, update to dead by daylight a lot of times this section will show up uh on your screen but it is nice to be able to kind of look back through at what all the different updates are um when they've hit um and it, it's really good for looking back at information that you might want to look at as well um So the other thing here that i'm going to list into this category is the news section as well it is pretty harmless the other thing that i'm going to add into this section as well with the daily rituals is also the news now the news isn't going to affect you one way or the other but it's nice to be able to see what kind of updates have happened to dead by daylight what are they looking at what new cosmetic items happen to be dropping into the store um and if there is a new update a lot of times you'll see this screen first where it'll show it now as of today this was the launch of the blight the descend beyond uh series so we got the blight and felix as well uh as well as a major overhaul to uh maps in general so they look really really awesome uh at, at the time of making this video but now we're going to go into each survivor match and to a killer match so that way you can see both sides and what to expect when you go into that particular match all right so the first thing is first when you spawn into a map it's going to randomly put you someplace on the map it's different every single time that you get in here now there are different things that you can interact with lockers pallet points uh vaulting points as well so this is something to keep in mind uh, as you're playing the game. There are different things that you can use. Now you'll notice here that we find the killer off pretty quickly. So we're going to try to do what is called looping the killer. And I drop the pallet there to show you. Now if you drop the pallet on a killer on top of their head, uh, it will stun them for a short duration and knock them out of bloodlust. 
Bloodlust is what the killer will get if they are in chase with you for an extended period of time. Uh, so it's important to make sure that you either drop a pallet on the killer to stun them or to force the killer to instead break said pallet will also break bloodlust. Now I dropped that pallet off there relatively early, but we can see that the killer kicked the pallet, thus slowing him down a little bit, and it bought me a little bit more time. That chase music that you're hearing in the background is a great indicator that the killer is chasing you, that there's still someone in the area, uh, and that they can get you. So as you can see here, I'm knocked on the ground. I'm in what's called the dying state. Now he picks me up on his shoulder and he puts me up onto a hook. Now there are, when you're playing a survivor, you get three chances uh, or three times of being thrown up on a hook before you're dead. First hook is phase one. You kind of just hang out. You do have the option to be able to try to escape, but it's only a 4% chance. So I don't recommend it unless you know no one is coming for you or you're the last survivor. The second phase, you're going to fight against the entity, and the third hook will instantly kill you. The best thing you can do in this first hook stage is just wait for somebody to come along and to unhook you rather than wait for yourself. The next thing that you're going to see here is what it looks like when you're going in for a save. Now you're going to be able to see the hook survivor from a from any distance on the map, uh, pending a few exceptions, but you are going to see them. And not only that, but you're also going to be able to tell what phase that they're in. If they're simply just hanging there, uh, then you know they're in phase one, or if they're struggling, they're in phase two. Now the other main objective for a survivor is to complete generators. The number that you see down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen shows us how many generators that we have left to complete before we can leave the match. Finishing all five generators will power the exit gate and give the survivors the opportunity to leave. Now there are seven generators on the map, but you only need to complete five of them in order to be able to leave. Now, additionally, what you can see here is the names of the four other survivors down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen this is going to show you whether or not your teammates are being chased uh, if they're the obsession or if they're injured or in the dying state or hooked as well now you'll notice there i missed a skill check on purpose so that way i can show you guys that missing a skill check on a generator will cause it to regress a little bit and make a loud audible noise this is going to let the killer know that you're over there in the area regardless of where they're at on the map so if you miss a skill check it's likely that the killer could come over to where you're at unless they're currently in a chase now when it comes to healing or working on generators working on them as a team or with multiple people is going to be faster than working on it yourself so keep that in mind as well once the generator is completed, you will know it because the generator top will be lit up fully for everybody to be able to see. Like I said as well, looking back before, we can see the different health states of the survivors. So we can see that one survivor is currently being hooked and the other two survivors are injured. Now you will see later on that more survivors are getting knocked down. But even from this angle, I can still see the survivor that's being hooked. And I can tell from experience that because it looks like he's down in the ground, that particular survivor is down in the basement. The basement is kind of the worst place that you want to be as a survivor. And I'll showcase that for you here in just a little bit. But see, we can see now we can see another survivor is currently being chased. And the third survivor is also on the dying state. So I need to do something quick. Speaking of the basement, as we can see here, I'm making a run in to try to save the guy from the basement. The reason why it's so bad for a survivor, but so great for a killer is because there's only one way in and one way out. So it's very, very deadly. And a lot of times you end up with multiple people injured or multiple people down as a result. In this particular case, the killer went after the person that I had just unhooked as well. So that is something you need to remember when going for a save. Now on your second phase of being hooked is a little bit different. Now you actually need to fight against the entity to keep it from killing you while giving your, your teammates an opportunity to come in for the save. 
So now you can tell that on the bottom left hand corner, my health bar is below the halfway point. That indicates that I'm in the second phase. And you can see here that the entity is trying to kill me. If I stop struggling, if I stop hitting the space bar at any point, the entity will automatically kill me. Or if I run out of time, the entity will kill me as well. So this is definitely a crucial point for a survivor that you want to try to avoid if at all costs. But you also want to make sure that you can hit this key reliably, whatever it is. Next, what we have here is what happens when all of the generators are powered. The exit gates will be known to us for a short duration. If you're having a hard time finding them after the fact, look on the outside of the map. That's where you're going to be able to see them. Now, additionally, what we see here is we see a hatch and the totem. So now totems, there are five of those on the map. Killers can use bring in what's called hex perks. So those totems, rather than being dull like this, you'll see them lit up. Not all totems are great for survivors when they are uh, when they are cleansed. So keep that in mind when you are touching a totem. But not doing totems can also negatively affect you as well. Now the hatch is a different kind of gameplay. The hatch will spawn depending on how many generators are done to how many survivors are left in the match. At the end of the game, when all the generators are powered, the exit gate or the hatch will spawn. When the last survivor is on the map or if somebody uses a key, the hatch will open so that we survivors can escape. Once the exit gates are powered fully and they are flipped on, we trigger the end game collapse. Now the end game collapse lasts for three minutes total. You will notice that when the, uh, when the Jeff there is hooked, that the bar turns from an orange to a gray. This gives us a little bit more time to be able to try to save our teammate. If we so choose, he let go. So that's not a, an issue, but you'll see that now because nobody is on the hook, it will switch back from gray to orange. Now we have a short duration of time before the entity will kill us. If we stay on the map, before that timer runs out or after that timer runs out, the entity will automatically kill us. Now, what I'm going to try to showcase here for you guys as well is what it looks like when the hatch. So the Claudette leaves, giving us the ability to take the hatch because I know where it's at. I can run over to it and show you guys that now the hatch is open. Taking the hatch versus taking the exit gate also gives us an additional 2000 points but it is trickier because the killer can close the hatch uh, but he cannot close and exit gate so keep that in mind when trying to escape as well so additionally here i'm going to showcase what it looks like when survivors don't come for you so at the end of our life when it runs out the entity will force itself down on us and it will kill us and our game is over if you happen to bring in an item and you die during the match, you're going to lose everything. Even if you escape with that item, whatever add-ons that you brought into the match, are, you're going to lose those as well. Now, after the match, you will be rewarded with your blood point total that you got from that particular match, as well as seeing whether or not that you pipped, black pipped, or safe, safety pipped, de-pipped, or pipped. Pipping means that you progress forward in rank. Safety pipping means neither or and de-pipping means that you move backwards. All right, from the killer side, if we click on the killer menu here, we can also see we've got different killers at our disposal and anything that is grayed out, just like on the survivor side, uh, we would also need to access this as well. But let's say we wanted to buy the cannibal. We can see here what perks that he has. So he's got knockout, barbecue and chili and Franklin's demise and how much that you can buy with them some killers are oryx cells only and other killers you can buy with iridescent shards it just kind of depends on the individual killer but heading back over here to the killer menu it's basically the same layout as the survivor as well we have our main power so you can see here with the huntress her main power is hatchets and then we can also if we had add-ons we can add it on to it add-ons and offerings that you would use as a killer are going to vary greatly depending on what killer you decide to play i'm not going to go into any detail really at all about which ones are best for what particular killer because there are tons and tons of different builds out there and tons and tons of other great videos that are out there that explain that 
and if i went into that this video would end up would be from like 30 minutes long or an hour long to like seven or eight hours long if i went into detail about every single one of them so we're just not going to touch it but same side you using your blood point currency here to unlock uh in your blood web to unlock your uh your next uh your next perk slots as well as perks that you would want to use once you get that killer that particular killer up to 25 30 35 or 30 35 and 40 depending on the killer and the perk you'll get a teachable perk that will add here into uh into this pool as well that you're going to be able to pull from it now killer side is a solo queue kind of thing you can play solo as a survivor but survivor gives you the ability to play with up to three friends killer on the other hand is completely solo unless of course you go into a custom match going into a custom match obviously you can play with your friends all that you want to but if you're more of the lone wolf type of player i would recommend maybe playing as a killer um i thoroughly enjoy playing as killers uh and as survivors because killers each one of them is different it's unique survivors once you have all of the perks on one survivor your survivors are kind of just a skin but killers are unique in their own way some are more powerful than others again i'm not going to go into the, all of that uh but um uh, you know the same thing as well we have different cosmetic items that you can throw onto your killer to change them up to make them look different if you have them available or you can come in here as well and you can you can uh select what charms you want and unlike the survivor charms that you get on the killer are going to show up on the killer's hooks uh during a match so starting off here with the killer we'll notice that we are randomly put into the match just like a survivor is uh but something's a little bit different so instead of being in a third person view we're actually in a first person view this is more of the predator type of view whereas the survivor can use the uh structures on the map to their advantage to be able to kind of avoid the killer the killer is in that first person's view so it's a good thing to remember on playing as both as killer or as survivor so the first thing that we're going to do is, is we're going to try to find the survivors my general rule of thumb i like to go with is when uh is seeing a generator across the map that's what i'm going to head for so we can see that this generator is being worked on there's a survivor nearby and we're going to hit them and throw another hatchet here to instantly knock them down now this puts the survivor into the dying state which we can pick them up now we can walk them over to a hook which is highlighted for us and we're going to hook the survivor now the next thing that you want to look out for as playing as a killer is potential blinds now we can see this jake here i uh, let him blind us so that way you guys could see just what that looked like being blinded if we had a survivor on our shoulder that would have caused us to drop the survivor and that's a very good save technique for survivors uh against killers but that's something to look forward uh when you are queuing up for a match you're going to be able to see what the survivors are bringing into the match as well so kicking generators here is going to regress them that is going to reverse whatever progress that the survivors made and depending on what perks that you bring that can speed up or slow down the match as well but basically you hook a survivor you try to find either a generator to kick or another survivor to get into a chase with now as the survivor there got rescued we got an audible warning or an audible sound that let us know that that survivor was being rescued so now we're going to head back over to the same area that we were just at to try to find the survivors this is very much a cat and mouse kind of thing and you kind of have to play with it but if the survivors screw up or if you have aura finding perks it is pretty good to be able to find them so i know that a survivor is right around here and i'm able to use that to my advantage so now each killer is different uh depending on how you're playing them the hunters uses hatchets so in order to use these hatchets i actually have to get uh, i have to go to lockers to refill the hatchets another thing that killers are able to do is they can break pallets so survivors can use the pallets against the survivors to either keep the 
keep the killer from being able to hit them or to stun the killer for a short duration but killers can break those pallets once a pallet is broken they can no longer use that pallet anymore during the match uh, a lot of times a killer you can break a pallet or you can uh, ignore breaking a pallet depending on if the loop is a safe loop or not now i'm not going to go too much into loops here uh, but what i will show you is that hooks when a survivor dies on a hook you'll notice that the hook falls on the ground we can no longer use that hook anymore to hook a survivor because somebody has already died on it another thing that we see here is the basement the basement is a killer's best friend particularly because there's only one way in one way out of the basement so this gives the killer a great advantage i'm going to show you kind of a backup view here but like i said there's only one way up one way down so you can get a vantage point to see if survivors are going to come for it or depending on the killer that you're playing you can set up traps for the survivors when they do try to go in for a save but as you can see here with this map i'm able to get a good vantage point to see if any survivors are coming into the area another thing to look for as well or to keep a mind out for like i said with the flashlight saves we're gonna let this david flashlight blind us just so that way i can show you guys uh what happens so eventually he's gonna find it there he goes he hits us and now that survivor has been able to jump off of our shoulder as a result this is really great as a as a survivor to be able to make those saves but it's something you really need to look forward to or look for as a killer during a match another thing that you'll see here as well is that i'm following scratch marks whenever a survivor runs or they're injured they will leave a marking to tell me where they're at i know that this claudette has gone inside of this locker and i'm able to pull her out of it immediately and throw her up on my shoulder so now if you've done well up until this point uh and there is only one survivor left on the match something you want to look for is the hatch now you will be able to hear the hatch from a distance and you will also give the ability to be able to close the hatch this now forces the survivor to pick between one of the two exit gates the advantage here is though for the killer because now i can see both exit gates at all times so at this point because i know the survivor has only two options here either one he has to go for one of the two exit gates or two if he brings in an item like a key that would give him the ability to be able to get out but i'm going to cycle back and forth between them because i didn't see him bring into a key in the pre-game lobby now if a survivor does manage to open up the exit gates all the way right it will uh it will give him the ability to leave as a killer you cannot close an exit gate but you can close the hatch but here's a little tidbit as well even if a survivor is crawling like in this example here as we per as we move towards the end of the exit gate we'll see that it gets blocked off but that's only blocking it off for us jake here is fully able to to crawl through and that's going to allow him to be able to escape the match so if you have somebody on the ground and they're heading for the exit gate it's a good idea to be able to pick them up now after the match you can see that we have different categories and that's depending on different uh, aspects of the gameplay that we've been able to uh, accomplish chases hooks downs regressing generators and we can see our overall match total and again we can see how well that we pipped here so as you can see we were able to double pip this also works towards our overall level progression for those iridescent shards that i was talking about earlier on and we can see the in-game screen here to where we can see all of the perks that the survivors brought in what items that they brought in what offerings they brought in their relative rank level and their overall score so this is kind of the end base card for everything in total all right guys that's my video what did you guys think if you watch this thing in its entirety i give it to you for that one this is a particularly long guide but hopefully you guys found this informative if you can smash that like button and turn on the notification bell so that way you guys know when i go live for you did i miss anything let me know down in the comments section below i'd love to hear from you i'm sure that there's probably a few things that i did miss but i think that overall 
we got the broad brush strokes of playing both killer and survivor in dead by daylight and this should definitely give you an advantage when playing for your very first time or within your first couple of matches to learn the ropes you guys i hope everybody has a wonderful wonderful night and i'll see you guys in the fog